see this kit that I ordered. Um, it's a truck bed liner. I've read a lot of good reviews about this online. I've never used the product before, and I'm not affiliated with them in any way. They're not sponsoring me in, in any form. Uh, just, I just wanted to give this a shot. Uh, and if this goes well on the bumper, I might actually coat some of the truck body where I've got some other rust issues. Um, so anyway, first thing I'm going to do is prep the new bumper uh, before I pull the old one off. So let's get the, uh, the kit unboxed, see what, it, see what they sent me, and uh, we'll work on getting the, uh, the replacement bumper painted with this, this liner. Be right back. All right, so I have unpackaged everything, as you can see, and I've got it all laid out. Um, we'll go th through everything here, uh, kind of one by one. But, um, and I'll also put links to uh, the the kit that I ordered. It's actually two separate kits. So I've got a gallon, one gallon of black, and then the, the catalyst. It's, it's you know it's a two part system, so you have to add the catalyst to the base paint uh, to activate it. Um, it, which, you know, the catalyst makes it cure and harden. Um, so I ordered a one gallon black kit. So that's what you get here. You get the cal catalyst and one gallon of, of the paint. Um, so that was one kit. And then everything else you see came in a separate kit. Um, I ordered the, uh, the two gallon tool kit. You can see here, this is everything that it includes. So you get, uh, four of the blue foam rollers that you see there, two coarse scuff pads that you see there that we're going to use to prep the surface before applying the Monster Liner product, two wooden paint sticks, which of course you can get at your local hardware store, but it's nice to have them handy, um, two disposable roller pans, you get the little plastic pans, uh, a roller frame to attach the foam roller too, a paintbrush, um, a low tech, roll of low tack masking tape that you can use to mask off if you're painting select areas, uh, three pairs of nitrile gloves to protect your hands, um, a drill bit paddle mixer, and you also get an installation guide which is handy. I think you can find all the information on their website. But uh, it's also nice that you've got it here at your disposal. Um, and then they also sent a cool magnet and a couple of, uh, there's a decal and a sticker and a thank you card. So that's kind of cool. Um, I don't remember how much I paid for all this. I want to say the toolkit was like 25 or $30. Um, I'm sure if you took the time to round these supplies up one by one, you could probably get it for uh, less than that. But for a few dollars, uh, I chose convenience over savings. Um, just ordered it with the paint. So anyway, I'm gonna grab my uh, replacement bumper, get it set up on some sawhorses probably, and uh, we will look into the instructions and start working on prep. All right, so here is my replacement bumper. I've got it set up on a couple of sawhorses. And as you can see, it's just primed black, but it does have a little bit of a satin sheen to it. Um, so our instructions say that the, the first thing we need to do is uh, to wipe this down. Um, the, ex the instructions recommend using MEK, which I think is methyl ethyl ketone, um, which is a solvent, but... I don't have any of that and my, my local hardware store didn't have any in stock either, but I do have some of this from a previous um, project. It serves the same purpose. It, it gets greases and oils off of a surface to be painted. So I'm gonna wipe everything down with that uh, using a rag. And I'm actually gonna do both the front and the back because I am planning to coat the inside of the bumper as well, uh, just for rust protection. Hopefully, That'll keep this uh, lasting longer than my previous bumper. But I'm gonna go ahead and wipe everything down and then the next step is gonna be to go over all the surfaces with, uh, with the scour pad to rough them up to, uh, to give the Monster Liner product something to adhere to. So first I'm gonna wipe this down and then we'll move on to, uh, to the scuffing process. All right, I've gotten the bumper 
wiped down and I'm ready to start prepping it with the scour pad. I'm going to go ahead and do the back side first. So we just need to go over all the surfaces. And you can see that's scratching it up pretty easily. That's going to give us a good bonding surface for the monster liner to adhere to. So we just need to go over the entire surface, scuff it up a little bit, and then we need to wipe it down again with the uh, either the MHK or the whatever prep solvent you're using. And then we're ready for the first coat. So I'm going to prep both sides and we're going to move on. All right, so I have gone over the entire bumper with the scour pad and it's knocked the sheen off. Hopefully you can see the, the scuff marks. And you can see that the shine is a lot duller than the bare primer was. Um, so now we just need to go back over this with the, uh, the solvent and wipe it all down again. Um, make sure we get all the dust and uh, handprints and oils from your skin off of the bumper and then it will be ready for application of the first coat. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do the prep and then we will work on mixing the paint with the catalyst next and we'll start painting. Alright, so I've gotten the bumper wiped down and we're ready to start applying the paint. Now, before you start, I would highly recommend you read the entire instruction packet that comes with the kit uh, because it's got some really important information about um, the mixing procedure as well as the drying time um, and the way that the um, atmospheric conditions affect the cure time. So. Um, I'll try to hit on a couple of these elements, but uh, you definitely want to read the instructions. Um, so before you start mixing any of this paint, you want to make sure all your prep work is done because as soon as you mix the catalyst with uh, the base paint, it sets off the chemical reaction, which you know over this period of 10 or 12 hours causes the paint to cure. Um, so you, you have a limited time to use the batch that you mix. Um, if you're doing a large project, then you're likely going to want to mix the entire can of Catalyst with the whole gallon of the paint. In my case, I don't need a whole gallon to coat this bumper. I over-ordered the paint because, like I mentioned earlier, I, I have hopes of uh, doing some other projects. Um, I've got some rust on the bottom of the doors that I'd like to coat with this product, assuming that this process goes well. So I'm not going to mix the entire gallon. Um, and in that case, the instructions say, you need to um, measure by volume uh, and mix one part catalyst with seven parts paint. Um, so I've got a graduated container here that I'm going to use to measure out by volume uh, and, and mix in the correct one to seven ratio. I've also got an empty paint can thing I'm going to use for um, adding my mix to. You don't want to just mix, if you're doing a partial um, batch you obviously can't mix in the paint cam that monster liner sends you so you need to be able to dump it into something else um, so that's going to be my process um, also you need to kind of plan ahead um, and decide whether you're going to mix one batch or two because um, it's going to take two coats to cover everything according to the instructions um, the pot life is six to ten hours depending on temperature and humidity so that means you've got once you put the catalyst in the clock starts ticking and you've got six to ten hours to use up the rest of the product before it won't be workable anymore it'll be too stiff to apply with the roller or the brush um, in my case I think I'm gonna just mix um, enough to do I'm gonna kind of guess and mix what I think will do one coat um, because it's getting late in the day now, and I don't know if I'll be able to um, get the second coat on this evening. It also looks like it might rain later today, so um, I'm probably going to just be safe and mix a second batch. If I get it done today, great. If not, um, I'll do it tomorrow. Um, it does say that <clears throat> if you don't, let's see, the time to recoat is for black is three to five hours. And it says the warmer the temperature and the higher the humidity is, it'll speed the drying time. So you could 
potentially recode it in as little as one and a half to two hours um, if it's warm enough and humid enough. The colder and drier the air is, then it's going to take longer to, to dry. Um, if you have a tenable paint, you, you can get this, I guess, in a white base, and you can get um, some of their tents. They have a lot of cool colors. Um, those look like they cure faster. Uh, the instructions say the dry time to recoat is two to four hours, depending on temperature and humidity. Um, for the black, you, if you don't get the second coat done in the three to five hour window, you can let it dry overnight, um, but you do have to install the second coat within 24 hours. So you got to plan ahead. Like I said, you, you want to make sure that you've got good weather or if you're not working outside that you've got um, a clean workspace inside and you also need to make sure it's well ventilated because this catalyst is a kind of a volatile product. Um, the instructions are very explicit about making sure you have good air ventilation if you're working inside. So anyhow, with all that out of the way, um, I'm going to go ahead and start mixing. So um, my plan is, like I said, I'm going to mix a 1 to 7 ratio in this empty uh, can. And then we are supposed to use the paddle mixer on a drill for uh, three minutes. So let me get this stuff mixed together and we will uh, move ahead. All right, so I've gotten the product mixed. Um, after you mix the catalyst with the paint, uh, you need to mix it for three minutes. I think I mentioned that in the previous clip, um, video clip. Um, and then the instructions also say when you are not working out of the pan or out of the um, can that your mix is in, you want to keep the lid on it so that it's not introduced to excess humidity um, because that just speeds up the curing process. All right, so I'm working on the back of the bumper first, obviously. I just made the first pass with the foam roller. Um, and it actually applies pretty evenly. I'm encouraged. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do the entire back surface with the roller or if I'm going to need the brush, but essentially I just loaded up the roller until it was saturated and started applying with constant pressure. Not pushing down too hard. You don't want it to uh, ooze out of the roller. You just want it to naturally apply on its own. And given that this is the back, I don't really care what it looks like. I'm really just doing this for um, protection. So I'll kind of figure out the, the method, the tricks on the back surface. And then hopefully by the time I get to the front, I'll have it pretty well down. So I'm just going to go ahead and get a good first coat on the back of the bumper. You can see the nice texture that it's leaving. It looks pretty uniform. And as it dries, it's supposed to kind of even out if you have uh, thicker spots. You don't want to do it too thick because then it'll start running, especially if you have a surface that's vertical while you're painting it. It'll just it'll create a run. Um, but so far, this looks promising. I'm going to finish up the back, and then we'll flip it, the bumper over and work on the front. All right, I've got the entire backside coated pretty well. So I'm going to move on to the front now. Be right back. All right, I just finished applying the sec. I mean, sorry, the first coat on the front of the bumper, and I'm honestly really impressed with the way this stuff lays down after you roll it. You can go back over it several times, and within a few seconds, the roller streaks disappear, and it all kind of just evens out. Um, but so I'm super impressed, and I'm I'm actually really excited about uh, the widespread applications of this stuff. I mean, I've seen it online many times, but to see it firsthand. I'm impressed and like I said I think I'm going to do some of the body work on this truck with this uh, to repair some rust areas and then I've, I've got an old beat up 88 Bronco that was my best friend's um, that is in pretty rough shape body work wise and uh, I'm tempted to just bedline the entire thing with this stuff so that'll be down the road sometime but so far I'm impressed. Um, I'm going to let this cure for a couple hours and then we will tackle the second coat. All right, it's been about three hours since I did the first coat and this is now dry to the touch. It's not tacky at all and I'm ready to apply the second coat. Um, according to my weather app, it's about, the ambient temperature is about 75 degrees now. It's probably in the low 80s when I applied this. Uh, it's early evening now, it's probably about 
6.30 or so now. <clears throat> um, so it's definitely cooled off some since I've applied the first coat, but uh, it's a pretty pleasant day with low humidity. Um, this is early June when I'm doing this, so um, very low humidity for this time of year. A um, little bit less than 50% humidity right now. So anyway, it, it only took uh, two hours and 45 minutes, a little less than three hours to, for this to cure, ready for the second coat. Um, and I'm, I'm really pleased. I don't know if you can see <clears throat> the texture very well on camera, but I'm really pleased with how this first coat turned out. Um, so I'm going to roll this over and apply the second coat on the back side. Um, just like I did the first time. Did the back side first and then flipped it over and did the outside second. <clears throat> um, it looks like I only used about half of my uh, mix for the first coat. So I actually, I actually mixed more than I needed to. If you recall, my plan was to uh, only mix enough to do um, the first coat, then I was going to mix a second batch for the second coat, but I've got some left, so I'm going to use that up. If I have to mix any more, it won't be very much. Um, <clears throat> but I'm going to get set up here, do the second coat, and uh, I'll try to give you a couple shots as I'm applying it, um, so you can see how, how it rolls on and evens out after uh, you let it sit for a few minutes. Alright, sit tight. All right, so I just applied the second coat to the back side of the bumper, and I have to say uh, I'm a little frustrated. Um, I, as I mentioned before, I had some leftover uh, coating from my first batch. Um, I ended up have, only using about half the mix that I made for the first coat. So according to the instructions, the stuff's supposed to be workable for six to ten hours. Again, I'm only three hours into this process. So I assumed it was going to be workable, but I'm I'm pretty disappointed to be honest with you. Um, I don't know if you can see, but there's tons of chunks where the first batch um, kind of filmed a formed a film or a skin. When I opened up my can, um, there's a good example right there. When I opened up the can. It had a skin across the top, and I tried to use a paint stirrer to remove that, and then I mixed it again uh, for several minutes with the paddle mixer and my drill, hoping that it would uh, kind of liquefy some of this stuff, these solids, but it, it didn't work. Um, I'm not sure if I mixed too much catalyst in the first batch or what, but I mean, I followed the instructions. I had the lid on <clears throat> the entire time between coats. Um, but it didn't turn out very good, so I'm I'm disappointed. Um, I would, if you're going to do this, I would absolutely recommend only mixing enough to do your first batch, uh, your first coat, and then if you have any leftover coating, just throw it away. Do not try to reuse it. I'm I'm glad this is on the back side of the bumper where it's never going to be visible, but I would be really unhappy if this was a visible surface because it just looks like crap. Um, Honestly, I don't know that you can see as well on camera, <clears throat> but in person it look, just it looks terrible. There's there's chunks of stuff everywhere, so I'm gonna have to pick, mix another batch. Um, unfortunately, I'm, I wasted a roller tray that I'm not gonna be able to reuse. So this time I'm I don't think I I don't have another roller tray. I'm just gonna have to dip directly out of my paint bucket that I mix in, which isn't the end of the world. Um, but I'm just, I'm disappointed. So, um, you know, word to the wise, if you're going to do this, like I said, only mix enough for your first coat, whatever's left, throw it away, mix a fresh batch for the second coat. And I expect that'll go on a lot better. Um, just like the first coat. And I, and I think my finished product on the outside is going to look fine. <clears throat> it's just a little frustrating to have followed directions and, and not end up with a, a workable product here for the second coat. So, Anyway, I just wanted to share my experience. Like I said, maybe I did something wrong, but I try to be pretty meticulous um, and follow the instructions, and it doesn't seem to have worked out very well for me. So sit tight. I'm going to mix up another batch, and uh, I'll be back shortly. All right, so I mixed up a second batch, and I'm ready to, to do the, uh, the outside of the bumper. Um, so I'm just going to try to give you a quick shot of how this stuff applies so you can see how it 
it lays down. Um, you want to go in one direction. And I'm using firm pressure, but I'm not pushing super hard. The instructions definitely say to uh, <clears throat> to apply it generously. You don't want to do it too thin because then you're probably going to see holidays in it or you know thin spots. <clears throat> um, but hopefully you can see the roller streaks disappear. You know, if I go over it, you can see a roller streak for a second, and then it sort of just vanishes. So a fresh batch applies really nicely. A batch that's been sitting for a few hours, not so much. So although the instructions say the working time is six to ten hours, I uh, I would refute that. That's really my only beef with this stuff so far. Otherwise, I'm really happy with it. And you can, you, even after it sits for a little while, you can go back over it like this. And it ends up looking pretty good. So, hopefully that gives you a good shot. I'm going to go ahead and finish coating this the second time and let it dry overnight and then we'll check back in tomorrow and see what the finished product looks like. Stay tuned. All right, so my bumper is cured and I am honestly really happy with how this turned out. Um, the coating is nice and even. I don't know how well it'll translate on camera, but I mean you can see the texture and it's pretty even aside from a few little spots like maybe right there where it looks slightly different like a different sheen um, it really really looks good I'm, I'm happy um, there's one spot where it looks like I put it on a little too thick I don't know if you can see right here so I'm gonna tilt this up in the sunlight yeah you can kind of see it it ran a little bit right there I'm not gonna sweat that um, you're really not gonna see that from the back of the truck so um, I'm, I'm happy <clears throat> Aside from the issue with um, not being able to reuse the leftover material from the first coat, I think this turned out really well. I'm pretty impressed with the product. We'll see how it holds up over time, but, but so far, I'm encouraged. Um, now, it's been, it's been an entire week since I applied um, the top coat. Um, it's, uh, this has just been sitting in my shed ever since curing. And I think the instructions do say it takes seven days to reach full cure. You could handle it, you know, a lot sooner than that. It's just the weather's been terrible here the past week, and I haven't had time in the evenings after work to mess with this uh, since I don't have a garage to work in. So uh, it's the weekend now, and I'm going to try to get this thing installed today. But I wanted to give you a look at how this turned out before I move on to the installation process. Uh, I'm, pr I'm pretty impressed.